Next, you will be listening to our pastor, Reverend Dr. Malachi Z. York L. in question and answer form. The mixing of the seed of these angelic beings with these human beings, according to this Bible in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6 and going on into 7, was that the people that came out of them, that they called giants, or they called the gibor, or the mighty ones, turned out to be wicked people, evil people, disagreeable people. Let me read Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 again. And God, in this case Elohim, saw the wickedness. The word there, wickedness, is ra'a. The same word being used throughout the Bible for evil. And that takes us back to Genesis chapter 3. And in Genesis chapter 3, the 22nd verse, notice what it says. And the Lord God, this is Yahweh Elohim, said, Behold, the man, which is the Adamites or Adon, is become as one of us. Let me say that again. The Lord God is making a statement here. Pay attention to the statement of your own Bible. Open your Bible to the fifth chapter of Genesis in the 22nd verse and read close. And it says, And the Lord God said, Now who's talking? Right, according to the Bible, it's saying right there that the Lord, the Lord God is saying himself. Now let's make note of what the Lord God is saying. He's saying, behold, or look. He's telling somebody or something to look at something. Behold something. So now you got the Lord God here and some other beings that God is talking to about somebody. He said, behold, the man. So now these beings are with him can also see. He's also conversing with them, and he's telling them to look at the man. And the man word in there, of course, is Adam, which is Adamized. Look at this man. Behold, the man is or has become as one of us. He has become like one of us. So God has now added the word like again, like, like in the image and likeness, but he's classifying himself as one of a us. So when people say, no, that God in the Bible is not a us, he's a single, he's not a we, that's not what God is saying. Well, that's the difference between a capital G and a small G. As I said a million times, there is no capital G's and small G's in Hebrew. The letter for G in Hebrew is Gimai. And there is none. And the Greek does not count because the original language that God was revealing the scripture to these children of Israel or Moses or Moshe on the mountain was in Hebrew. It was not in Greek. That's a trick by the devil to deceive you because he can understand how God can be pluralized in the Bible. Again, I go back to Genesis chapter 3, the 22nd verse. I want you to cue in on what I'm saying. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us. You know what I want you to cue in? Because we're not talking about Elohim by themselves here, which we know is supreme. And we already read throughout Genesis chapter 6 where the Yahweh says the man is like him. In a form, he takes on a flesh. We know that Yahweh or Jehovah takes on a physical form because we even call Jesus an incarnation of Jehovah. But here we get Jehovah and Elohim together, the Lord God. Meaning one of these Jehovah's who is a member of a group of gods called Elohims. Now we got to look at the Bible in the book of Psalm 82, verse 1. Go to your Bible and look there. So what you're going to find is the word, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. If you look in the Hebrew, you find the word El, the mighty ones. He judges amongst the gods. The word there, God, is Elohim again. So here you get God judging amongst the Elohim. So when he steps off to make a decision against the Elohim, he doesn't become a Jehovah. He doesn't become a Yahweh or Yahweh. He becomes an L. Because an L breeds an Elo, which breeds an Elohim with an end for do, which breeds an Elohim, which is a plural. And right here in Psalms 82, he makes that clear. It's in the Bible. And what is the relationship between man and God is also found in the exact same chapter. If you look at the same chapter, Psalms 82, and now go to verse chapter 6, you know what it says? I have said, ye are gods. And all of ye are the children of the Most High. So now it makes men Elohims. Making mortals, ye are gods. But all of you are the children of the Most High. Now you're back to Ilyun again, or El again. Putting you back, so putting you back in rank. So when you go back to Genesis, and you go to that verse in Genesis chapter 
3 verse 22 now I'll read that within mind what we just studied and the Lord God see now you understand that this is a Yahweh a human God who came to earth who walked in the garden in the cool of the day who Adam was able to hide from right who didn't know who had taught Adam who asked Adam who told you you were naked this God had human qualities he was a child of God but he was a Yahweh Yahweh's can become members of the higher order called the Elohim. And they're going to tell you here who these Elohim can be. Again, listen. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is as one of us. Man has become as one of us. He didn't start off one of us. He became one of us. So this man they're talking about according to you is Adam. Adam didn't originate as one of them. Adam became one of them. So he wasn't created one of them. So this is not talking about the original Elohim who he said he was created in the image and not the likeness of. Adam became a Yahweh now. You know he was an Elohim in the image and not the likeness of the Elohim. But now he becomes a Yahweh. Yah means good and way means evil. They use that as Tov and Ra in the Hebrew. Good and evil. It's going to go on to say it. Watch. Close. To know good Tov and evil, ra, or disagreeableness. Now check that out. The Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good for me. Wasn't that, wasn't, didn't that, wasn't that what was said in Genesis chapter 3? In the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good from evil. That's right in Genesis chapter 3. And did they not partake of the forbidden fruit? So therefore their eyes were open, they knew shame, they had to wear aprons, and thus they inherited a new attribute, good and evil. And they stepped down from the quality of being Elohims down to being simply Yahwehans or Jehovahans with the nation. Now Jehovah's nature is good and evil. It's going to say right here, now the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now, least or unless, he puts forth his hand and takes also of the tree of life which means he took up some other tree that was the tree of what good and evil that he was told not to so they knew by this that this man had his own willpower now and that he had the power to go and take of that tree because it says right here least he puts forth his hand and takes also of the tree of life and eats and lives forever so these Yahwehans could live forever Yet they were men. So they're not the same ones mentioned in Genesis chapter 6, where he says, The extent of their life would be 120. My spirit shall always die with man, for he is also flesh, but his days shall be 120. These people were beyond that. They live forever. And they were afraid that man now might grab that tree with that good and evil nature and live forever. And man is working on that every day in laboratories. He's working on, he decoded the chromosomes. He's trying to cure all the diseases that kill man, including old age that the scientists have now agreed is merely a sickness. A lack of protein attacks the body, so they're finding out ways to prolong life. All right, now this is in the Bible. Let's see what happens when we go down to the 23rd verse, because we want to know who's talking. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden. The word Eden means delight. So, because God now does not, or the, I should say the Lord God now, because now we're talking about a Yahweh and of the Elohims, an individual with a personality who gets jealous, who gets angry, who just, he didn't want man to become powerful as him, so now he's sending man out of the delightful garden. They call it Gan, the garden, Edom means delight, garden of delight, where everything was there for you. He wants to send him out of the garden. Let's read it again. They sent Cain out because he committed a sin. Now they send Adam out because of what they think he's capable of doing. Let's lean on that a minute. Cain killed Abel, so he was thrown out the garden for murder. Correct? Now Adam is being thrown out for suspicion. That's not God. God don't work off of suspicions. God knows. The Elohim or the El would know. He wouldn't have to suspect that Adam, at least he does it. Or maybe he'll do it. Or he might do it. He already knows. So anybody who has to say you might do a thing has the same intellect as a man. But the same people had divine power. So man also has divine power. The power to live forever. And they've been seeking what they call a fountain of youth. 
Monsieur de Leon went to in St. Augustine, Florida, looking for the fountain of youth. Now they're cracking chromosomes open and saying they found the fountain of youth. Every time you turn on top, they got something that's going to change your skin and make you younger. Take these pills and you get rejuvenation and all that kind of stuff. They're still playing the devil's game. Let's read it again. It says, therefore the Lord God, remember this was a Yahweh of the Elohim, sent him, meaning Adam, which, which, is a, which is a group of people also, forth from the Garden of Eden, and what he do? To till the ground from whence he was taken. Made him a farmer. He would not be a God. Things, he would not be in a garden of delight like the gods where everything is provided for him. The word provision means risk for those who don't understand the original language. He was not amongst those people who lived in a place called risk, which means a place of provision, a garden of delight. When you say a man is from planet risk, you're really saying he comes from amongst those angelic beings who became human, who at one time lived in a place where everything was provided, because this new man was now sent out to till the ground, to work by the sweat of his brow, the way y'all have to do now. Turn your way back. I'll say it again if you need it. To till the ground from whence he was taken. Are we talking about his body or are we talking about his soul? Are we talking about that what? We're talking about that body because the body was with the flesh from the dust to the ground. And the soul was breathed into him from the Elohim. So the Yahweh is in tune with the body. And the Elohim is in tune with the soul. Goes on in verse 24. I want to touch on this because I want you to know who this is when they say the Lord God. So he drove out the man and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims or cherubims. The word cherubim is Hebrew from cherub, which means to get close to or near to. Those angelic beings nearest to God or close to the garden or close to the gate. But these type of beings he's talking about were there to fight man back. If he was there to fight man back, and man at this point was still like an angel, and an Elohim or Yahweh, Elohim was talking and made man like himself, and then they put a cherubim to fight him, then the cherubs in the Bible must be the dragon's angels, and the seraphim in the Bible must be Michael's angels. So the seraphim must be the good angels, seraph, and that's flame of fire, and then you have the pedals, and they must be the devil's angel. And that's your revelation of war between the seraphim and the cherubim. Revelation 12, 79. Thank you. And he puts the cherubim at the east of the gate. And what is it? And a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the garden of the tree of life. To keep man from getting to the tree of life. You know what I'm saying? That all ties back in to what we're talking about in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. And God, now there's no longer a, a Yahweh Elohim here. There's no Lord God here. It says, and God saw the wickedness, the ra'a, the same thing that they said that would be in man that if man but took of that tree. And the same thing they said, now the man has become like one of us, knowing good from it, having that same word, wickedness. So them angels that was talking in that garden in Genesis chapter 3, verse 22, also had wickedness in them. Of course they did. They warred in heaven. Some was cast out. We got walking amongst us in human form. Arm, leg, leg, arm, head. Devils. Fallen angels. Looking like us. Eating with us. Drinking with us. Preaching to us. But they're demons. They're a friend that puts his foot on the gas and says speed. That causes the accident and kills people. They're the person that brings the drugs to the party. The one that brings the gun to school. The one responsible for the drive-by shooting of the innocent kid. And the preacher that sits there and lies Sunday after Sunday and works off of no facts, no truth, no investigation, but he's trying to appeal to your sensitivity, trying to appeal to your fear of going to hell, and he keeps on stirring you with all this roar, with all this roaring, screaming and music, and ain't saying nothing. Making you waste valuable time on earth. Because he doesn't understand the word of God. As he would say. There's devils walking amongst us. White devils, black devils, red devils, yellow devils. The color of the devil don't mean nothing. They're amongst us. They live with us. You may be married to one. 
You may not be able to face that your husband is a devil, but he does devilish things. You may not be able to face that your wife is a devil, or your child is a devil. The devil's seed is mixed in with us, and that's what we're talking about here. When the sons of God marry the men on earth, what man would they marry? A man that had become like them, knowing good from evil, thus he had as much good in him as he has evil. And that's most people walking the street. They have to make the decision to become good, because evil's already out here waiting for you to teach you. You can find a million ways to be bad. You got to make it your business to try to be good. You got to try to make yourself discipline yourself not to do that. I'm not going to smoke marijuana. I'm not going to touch it. If you don't, it's there for you. You got to make it. I ain't wearing no mini skirt. I ain't wearing my skirt all tight. I'm not going out to clubs all hours of the night. I'm not going to drink hard alcohol. You got to make that decision yourself because evil is waiting for you. Devil has made evil fair seeming for you. And he's walking among us. Don't fool yourself. Better reconsider relatives. All of us talk about the when we have family reunions, that one uncle or aunt that comes in every year and starts trouble. And we laugh about it. But nobody stopped to think that she was a devil. The devil's child just looking like one of us. There to cause disturbances. Because everything about here said, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continuously. It constantly start wars. Nation against nation, tribe against tribe. Call it politics. Call it economics. Call it any name you want. But it's the works of the devil. Let's go just take their wealth. They got gold in Africa. Let's enslave the Africans and steal their gold. Let's create a apartheid and take the diamonds out of South Africa and massacre and torture people. And all the other people that look over at that and don't do anything about it is just as evil. And it's not only happening in Africa, it's happening in Europe. It is happening in Asia. The devil has his hands everywhere. Let me go on. Chapter 6. And he repented the Lord. Now notice, it then jumped from verse 5 where it said, The Elohim saw the wickedness, but it repented to Jehovah. Because a Jehovah could repent. See, Jesus was a God man, a Elohim and a Jehovah. You see? So when he called on his father, he used the word Eli. He went back to El, all the way back. Eli, Eli, Lamathabethani. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? He never called himself Jehovah. But when they named him, they named him Yahshua. And the word Shua means savior or salvation in Hebrew. And the Jah is short for Jehovah or the Hebrew letter Yad. The hand that wrote the original Torah of law called Namus in the New Testament. And Ta'ara in the Old. You follow that? So he was a man God. So Jesus had to repent. Jesus had to be waxed wise in wisdom. He had to grow in his knowledge. He didn't always have it. And he had to be baptized. For the remission. Mark. There you go. And I told you that angels. Which they're calling sons of God. Come down to earth. And they go into women who are specially chosen. And they give birth to gibbons. Or great men. They tried it once with a group of women. Who gave birth to as it called right here. As it says in Genesis. In Genesis uh, chapter 6 verse 5. They became wicked. I'm just showing you what the word of God is really saying. <laughs> And let you know why they want to keep us in this myth. Why they want to keep us ignorant to the fact. Why they want to keep us spellbound by something we can't prove so we don't look intelligent. Well, Reverend York, that there right there is mm -hmm. what converted me. I, well, that's truth is truth. That's all I got to say. Truth is truth. Don't believe nothing I say. So check it out. Check Odeo Bible, follow me. Yeah. Take this radio station so and go back over and check every quote yourself. Get a Hebrew dictionary, get an online Bible, get a lexicon and check it yourself and see that you've been lied to, that you've been being fooled. All the stuff we call Christianity comes out of ancient Israel. That's our, our ancient way. And we gave it to the Romans and they modernized it. We gave it to the Greeks and they modernized it. And they're running around out there, Romans and Greeks, acting like they're Roman Catholics and Christians. And it's our way of life. They changed the names and made it more mythology and messed it up. Here we sitting right here. Yes, mm, well, mm, hey, hey. Amen. And don't even know we said I'm on the I'm on the We don't even know that it's ours. So we ain't getting that power. Let's find out now why everybody on the planet appears to be so wicked. Because it says it right there. You walk around with a God complex. Because you got the spirit of God in you. 
And every time you try to suppress a man with a God complex, you're going to get an explosion. When you take these Egyptian people all over the world called Negroids, and y'all suppress them, mm -hmm. oppress them, you take anything like that and, and keep squeezing together, it's going to boom, explode. The truth is starting to explode in your faces because of what you're doing to the original Egyptians. You follow? Go ahead. Seven. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth. Now it's created. See that? Mm -hmm. He's going to destroy him from where? From the face of the earth. From where? From which he created him. From the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. That's a mm -hmm. it. Fainee in the face or in front of the yeah. earth. Is he going somewhere else? Mm -hmm. How much you destroy him from the face of the earth and not just destroy him? Mm -hmm. Is he taking them from the surface of the earth? Somewhere else maybe? <laughs> Is some of them going to leave and go somewhere? And then come back later? Mm. Read it again. And the Lord Yahweh. said, Yahweh, I will destroy man whom I have created. Who is he talking to? I will. I will destroy man. Who is he talking to? Mm. Mm. Mm? The Elohim. Is that one? The point is the group again, but Yahweh is one of them talking to the ones who really have the power. You made this your children, you chose them, you did this program, Yahweh. This is your thing, and I'm going to destroy them. <laughs> he has to do it. It's his job. Now you know he's mortal. Because God don't have to drown you. Now if I want to kill you as a man, and we're in that water, I might drown you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God don't have to drown people to kill people. Mm -hmm. God can fake us out of existence. Mm -hmm. right. And won't be no water, no waiting, no 40 days, no ox, no nothing. Well, I want to save um, Noah. Well, raise Noah like you did Christ until the flood's over. He'll stand right there. He won't get hungry, not if he's in the hand of God. He won't get thirsty, not if he's in the hand of God. He won't get tired, not if he's in the hand of God. Hold him up there until it's all over. You don't have to use this human method. Now read the human method. And watch how it changes. God's going to what? Destroy man mm -hmm. whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast. Why are the animals being destroyed? What did they do? They must have been in the breeding. Mm -hmm. There must be a human man and a beast man. Mm -hmm. Every animal has fur. Mm -hmm. Every man has hair. I ain't gonna say much. <laughs> there must be some people on earth that are related to beasts and animals. And there must be some people on earth that are related to God. You understand what I'm trying to say? And the people that are related to the beasts, the animals, the fur, are always trying to make the people who are related to God press their head. Mm. <laughs> so it look like fur. fur. <laughs> and they fall for it proudly. I ain't gonna say much. <laughs> I'm just gonna touch on the truth. You figure it out for yourself what happened. What about that beast thing? I want you to talk about seven. We had seven now. Okay. And Yahweh said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. That's the only way he could be forgiven. Repentance. Repent means to repent, to see forgiveness. The only way this Yahweh of the Elohim could be forgiven for what he did caught by letting gods and men mix in is that he destroys it all. It goes on, it's interesting. But, go ahead. But Noah found grace. Grace is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So there was one of these humans mm -hmm. called Noah, who we know is found in the Gilgamesh epics mm -hmm. originally before the Bible, and his name is Utnapishtun, mm. or Utnapishtun, of the flood, mm. which goes all the way back to Egypt to Khufu, mm. of the flood, Snefiru, mm. time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. We're starting a new thing with a new generation, like Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. We're starting a new generation again, a new beginning. <laughs> These are the generations of who? Of Noah. Noah was, was a just and perfect in his generation, in his genealogy. His bloodline was pure, perfect. 
What does that mean? That there were other people on the planet whose genes were not perfect. Stop and take a breath. Say amen. 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 Think about that now. I want to say it because that's important to me. There's Noah's genes were perfect. Gen generation, genealogy. Dog or Thuluf. Perfect. What does that mean? You tell me, sister. That his genes were perfect? That his genes was perfect. God saw faith in him and his grace with him because his genes was perfect. I'm emphasizing his genes was perfect because what? His genes were not defective. His genes were perfect and God saw them genes. Mm -hmm. God's a geneticist, first of all. So there must be imperfect genes on earth. If Noah's genes are perfect and God pointed out and saved him because he was perfect, then his people on the earth in those days in were earth. imperfect genes. Down syndrome could have been. That's an imperfected gene. A 47th chromosome. 48th chromosome is a chimpanzee. Right. Yeah. Who they say man comes from. That's kind of interesting, huh? Chimpanzee's 48. A Down syndrome is 47. And humans are 46. Chimpanzees. Do they have hair or fur? Fur. <laughs> I ain't gonna say much. What? <laughs> I'm going to let you work with that. But there was imperfect genes on the planet Earth during Noah's time because of the wickedness and the mixing. Mm -hmm. And there were giants in the earth in those days. And there were human beasts in the old days called behemoth in the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? There were people living in the land of Nard where Cain got his wife from. They shouldn't have been there. And they had their own family lines and their own, and they had a man named Nimrod who was building a tower. Mm -hmm. He had his own doctrine from somewhere else because the God from up there had to look down and say, what are they doing down there? <laughs> so he was getting his instructions and his blueprints and, his, and, his, and everything from some other God mm -hmm. or some other source. Other than his, his name was Son of God the second, really. Because mm -hmm. all these stories are ancient Sumerian stories and ancient Egyptian stories brought into the Bible when you really start doing your study. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. These are generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Ten. And Noah gave birth or begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Yepheth. They were not three different races because he was perfect in his generations. Mm -hmm. And if you mix races, you can't be perfect in your generation. That's imperfection. So to say that Ham was black people and Shem was Semitic people and Jephthah was Russians is crap. <laughs> they were all one race of people. Negroids. We're here. Perfect in their generations. The original seed. Everybody knows that the oldest race on the planet are the Negroid race. This ain't no more uh, assumption or myth or a folklore. This is a reality. It's been proven that the oldest people on the planet Earth come out of Uganda in Africa. Not me here. Are you with me? All right now. It's very important that we see that. <laughs> and know that all three of the sons of Noah, which means to rest as a word, Noah, were of one race. Shem Ham and Jeff of perfect generation. Mm. Perfect genealogy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it Would you was stop? corrupt. I don't want you to go that far, dear. I want you to stay in 11. Read 11 again, because people need to know that. The and the earth was what? Also corrupt. Was, was also... The was earth corrupt. was corrupt. Mm -hmm. What? Before God. In front of God's very face. That's now we're back to the Elohim. So God is looking down. Elohim's look down. Yahweh's look across. Elohim is looking down at the earth. Yahweh's are looking at the human beings. They're looking horizontally versus vertically. Elohim's are vertical. Yahweh's are uh, horizontal. And, uh, and these Elohim down and step back in and pull the Yahweh's back out. And the Elohim were talking about the corruption that they see in the earth. earth. What do they say? And the earth was filled with violence. Corruption associated with violence. violence. Isn't that what Cain was afraid of? Mm -hmm. He's afraid that whoever catches him is going to commit violence and kill him. Mm -hmm. Who are these violent people? Where do they come from? These are in 
perfect genes. People who are genetically defected. What do they do? They act like beasts. They prey on other people. They hunt for the fun of it. They kill for the fun of it. They hang people for nothing. Just for the heck of it. Heck is a word meaning curse. Hex. Just for the heck of it. They act like animals do. Prey on other human beings, innocent human beings, for the fun of it. Because they are not perfect in their genes. They are genetically defected because of God's experimenting with animals and mortals and producing a beast man. Mm. All the races, and say, everybody take off their shirt mm -hmm. on a hot summer day. Mm -hmm. When you start seeing fur on people's shoulders, mm. fur on the center of their arms, fur all on their back, mm. you understand? Mm. When their hair is growing all up the side of their face and their eyebrows are connecting and their preference is steak raw or rare and they prey on other people and call them barbarians they're talking about a person called Enkidu Enkidu <laughs> Oh yes, that sounds funny but look him up Enkidu In the Gilgamesh epics in relation to the story of the flood in Utnavishtum you'll find a beast called Enkidu who's part human and part beast in records recorded before the Bible, covered with fur mm. because of genetic splicing and laying up with animals, and they call it bestiology. They don't even say you lay down with dogs and get up with fleas. Mm -hmm. That's why I can't. That's why I can't have no dog in my house. I could have him in my yard. I could have him protect him. My he can't be flopping down on my bed and licking me on my lips. That don't seem natural to me. I don't see that in God's book anywhere where my dog will be licking me in my lips. I like it, but not that much. I don't even let some of my relatives kiss me in my mouth. Let alone some dog. You understand what I'm saying, don't you? Because it's time to understand what I'm saying. Because I think if our people understood what I'm saying, they'll realize what they're up against. And they'll stop fooling themselves. Stop looking for things they ain't going to never get. Stop expecting certain kind of people to change that they're never going to change because of their nature. Right. And it's in the Word of God. Mm. And it's not racism. Right. It's the Word of God. Mm. <laughs> Is that the cursed race? I ain't going there. Mm, okay. Because when you start touching on that, they start calling you a racist. Okay. And I found out as long as they were having a story in their Bible that black people were the curse of Ham, and the Bible tells you that Noah mm. had all his sons the same year, mm. Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. Look that up. But let me go back to that Mormon thing. They have an endocrine in blacks was cursed with nappy hair, which scientists have now proved is the healthiest hair on the planet and the only hair on the planet, mm -hmm. right? And that they were cursed, and if they had big lips, mm -hmm. now people are getting silicone lips and stuff, mm -hmm. trying to look black, and, and that dark skin, and people are laying on the beach, burning themselves up and getting tanned. Mm -hmm. Back then, it was all right to say that God put a curse on blacks and the blacks should be in servitude to other people because that's what Genesis 9.25 says. But now there's a fact that the word ham is not even a Hebrew word but an Egyptian word meaning chemet or chemet. Mm -hmm. And if they built pyramids and obelisks and was performing alchemy and, and transforming minerals and changing copper into um, lead into gold and performing eye operations and then we involved in golf and bowling and the bagpipe that the Scottish march down the streets with is an Egyptian instrument as well, along with the guitar and the piano. Mm -hmm. But we invented the bed that everybody loves so much. Mm -hmm. We invented eyebrow, eyeliner, extensions, wigs and all. We did it all. Now those same old people that the Mormons were calling backwards ignorance and people drawing them up, making us look like monkeys, drawing pictures of a black man and a monkey, mm -hmm. where monkeys don't have nappy hair, right, have monkeys have fur, mm -hmm. monkeys don't have thick lips, mm -hmm. monkeys and apes have thin lips. Where's that chapter in the Bible? Let me turn to it. Genesis 5.32. Let's turn to Genesis 5.32. Watch how interesting this is about Noah and his sons, right? 532, go ahead somebody. And Noah was 500 go ahead. years old. And Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. He was 500 years old, right? Mm -hmm. You only become 500 years old in one year. Mm -hmm. 
You with me? Yes. Now read that verse in the Bible and see what God says and not what somebody wants you to think. Read what God is saying. Go ahead. And Noah what? Was 500 years old. And Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. How old was he when he begat Shem, Ham, and Jephthah? The word Wah is a mathematical term in the Bible also for plus. And all that happened in one year when he was 500 years old. So what were they? Say it again. Triplets. He and his wife had triplets. They couldn't have been different races. They were born. Let me see you have three children in one year. <laughs> and not be and not be a defected gene. Because he was perfect in his generation. So his wife carried the baby the full nine months, which is nature's way. They had to be triplets, so they were the same race. So Ham, Shem, and Jephthah were not one black, one this, no. They were all one race, Negroid. Mm -hmm. And how I know they were Negroid? Because you called Nimrod a Negroid. You say, right now, listen, you won't find out why. Because as you go down, remember this name, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah? When you go down to the seed of Shem, Ham, and Jephthah, you know what we come up with? Let's find it. Let's go to Genesis chapter 10. 10 verse 8. There you go. 10 verse 8. Mm -hmm. What does it say? Wait a minute, let's find out who Cush is first. You ready? Cush. What does it mean? Cush means black. Alright, I'm trying to find that seed in here. Okay, let's start here. And the sons, Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Foot, and Canaan. Now, if Ham was one of the triplets, mm -hmm. right. so if Ham was black and Jephthah was black, if Mizraim and Cush and Foot were all black, mm -hmm. then Noah must have been black. a Negroid mm -hmm. and perfect in his generation. Mm -hmm. You understand? Know Follow the word of God and everybody will be right. Everybody will get out those translations, mm -hmm. stop listening to those preachers who don't know what the heck they're talking about, and get back to the original word, they won't have these problems. But they don't want to do that. They make me crazy. Because mm -hmm. I spend my life as a language dissecting the Semitic languages. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do that, you mm -hmm. see. They want to get up there and just yell and scream and sound good. Mm -hmm. You can do that at a James Brown concert. Mm -hmm. And that preacher gets up there and preaches from the Bible and don't break down the words, but words from the Hebrew mm -hmm. is not using God's words, he's using King James words, it's a man's word. Mm -hmm. And he should take the time to master the language. Right. Mm -hmm. Get out there. So we're like at war with the devil. Whoa, that's, that's putting it pretty lightly. When you go back to the Bible and you start to read in the Bible in Genesis again, let's, before I go into Genesis chapter 3 where the devil is first being introduced to us, named Nakash, some people call him a Haya, right? I want to read the last verse of Genesis chapter 2 so you can see how it leads into that. The last verse is the 25th verse and it says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife. And were not ashamed. They introduced something in there that's very important. They say man and woman were naked all through Genesis 2 and 1. But they wasn't no, there was no shame. They wasn't good or evil yet. You know what I'm saying? But now we're going to introduce man into a new thing. Let's start with Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. It starts off by saying now. Every time you hear now, you're identifying time. So after all that there, it says man and his wife were together, but they were naked. But they didn't know that they were naked because they didn't see it as something shameful. You know, name another country where that can happen at. Africa. They make fun of it in the Geographic magazine. But you go throughout Africa and some parts of South America, and people are still walking around buck naked. But because they haven't been introduced to religion, they haven't been introduced to shame, they haven't been introduced to the works of the devil, they don't know. So without that, a whole lot is cut off. Lust, rape, seduction, a whole lot of things that are introduced into the world are cut off just by virtue of the fact that a breastless woman in Africa is not a lust symbol. A person walking around naked in a, a community where everybody's naked, don't look at their body as something that someone should long or lust after. So you find out one of the devil's biggest tricks is lust and luster. And it's coming off the television and the media and the videos and the way they portray women. And they portray women as a lust symbol. That in itself is the works of the devil. And let's see how that happens and where it happens right here in Genesis chapter 3. It says, now the serpent, the word they use for serpent. Now, here you're listening to serpent, you're thinking snake. 
First of all, let's establish that snakes do not, cannot, will not, and if they wanted to, can't talk. That's true. They don't talk. Some snakes hiss, but they do not talk. They don't have a larynx. Then secondly, they're saying serpent in the King James Version, but the word there in Hebrew is nachash. Nachash. And it means a whisperer. It's not a serpent. It's a whisperer. Now why a whisperer? Because with whisperer comes suggestions. Evil suggestions. Whispering into the hearts of men. Evil people. Now let's say what it says. Now the whisperer. The Nahash was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God. Uh oh, here we go again. Who made the devil? The Elohim or the man God? The Lord God, a Yahweh, did this. Because this Yahweh, as it says, has in Genesis, same chapter 3, when we get near the end of it, knows good from evil because he's good and evil because he said, at least the man become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And that he's admitting that to being someone who knows good and evil. And man knew a good and evil and it resulted in the man becoming wicked. So those angels must have also know good and evil and they must also be. So now they're talking about another angel, which they call a fallen angel. They call him Lucifer. They say he fell from the grace of God. Right? And now they're talking about him. But who did it? Who did it? The Lord God, not Elohim. Yahweh Elohim did it. The human God who was once amongst the good gods. A cherubim who was once amongst the seraphim who was cast from heaven. All right, let's see what it says. He was more subtle, more sneaky and conniving and manipulative. He was more subtle than any beast of the field. The word you find there in Hebrew is hey for beast, Chay, which really means living, has nothing to do with any species or creature. And the word they have for field there is shoulder, which simply means the land or outside. Note that they are comparing the beast of the field with a serpent, a reptilian, and they call him subtle or clever. Why would they compare a snake, a reptilian, to a beast of the field? He's more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made but did not create. So the nature of evil is something that's made. And that's why Adam wasn't originally evil and Eve wasn't originally evil, but they became evil. At least man become like one of us. So evil is something that you can become. It's not something you were born. Babies ain't born evil. All right now. And he said unto the woman, who? Nachash. Ha-Nachash. The serpent, a snake, a reptile who's a beast of the field made by Yahweh Elohim. He said, he, doubled, he spoke to the woman. Snakes don't talk. So we're talking about the symbolism. Mm -hmm. We're talking about this subtle, sneaky, climbing, and hissing nature of a snake. A low creature, they're saying. That's not what the medical community says. Because mm -hmm. when you walk into any hospital where the word simply means hospitality, they never profess to be able to cure you. She's not, it's, it's not called a cure building. <laughs> it's called a hospital. Hospital. They have to be hospitable to you. When you walk in there and look at the symbol above you, you see a sword with a snake climbing up it. And they call that the medical symbol. So they don't see it as a bad symbol. When Moses left out of Egypt and during the Exodus, he had a big, a big staff with a snake above it. A serpent in front of it, they say. The Israelites didn't look at it as bad. When did the snake become bad? They knew they wasn't talking about a snake. They knew they was talking about a symbol. It was talking about a nature of a person. And this person can speak. And that's what's frightening to them, why they got to make it a devil or a thing, because they'd have to explain how this serpent was a grown man who could speak in the garden if Adam and Eve were the first people on the planet. And if this serpent is not God, then what is he doing in the garden talking? How do you get in the garden? How do you get a right to be inside a garden of delight? This is supposed to be paradise and perfect. How does imperfect creature get inside there? He must have looked just like Adam and Eve or looked just like the angels. And those angels in that garden were walking in the cool of the day. They looked just like man because man was made in their image. And after that likeness, man cannot be made in the image. And after the likeness of a spiritual God and have a physical body. You can have the spiritual God blew his spirit into man. But man's manifestation in a physical form is a representation of his angelic beings who did the work of God. Not the physical body. Is that illusion? All right, so listen to this. And he said unto the woman, the serpent is talking, Yea, has Elohim, now he done stepped out of his ground. He didn't go to Yahweh, because he was created by Yahweh, Elohim. Yea, has Elohim said, ye shall not eat of every tree in this garden, or in the garden? He's already questioning God. He's questioning Elohim's power. 
Check what happens. Two. And the woman said unto the serpent. So now Eve is speaking back to a snake. No woman ain't right mind, as I said many times, to <laughs> talk to a snake. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So she must have saw a man standing there. And a man like herself, if you're standing with big old white wings or, or and, and a halo and floating in the air, you wouldn't have, she wouldn't have answered him that same way. So he must have been standing looking just like any other human being. And the woman said unto the serpent, or unto Nakash, which is his name, right? We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. Number three. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst or the middle of the garden, God, meaning Elohim, has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye shall die, mut. Your time will end, mut. That's the Hebrew word for death. If you eat this tree or touch it, you'll die. Who says that in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7 about pig? Don't eat it and don't touch it. People are eating and touching it every day, even though the Bible says don't do it. They make a holiday out of it. So that's the devil's work again. Getting you to violate God's law. But he used it right here again. Now watch what's on the four. And the serpent on the high said unto the woman, to, meaning to Eve, ye shall not surely die. He went up against God's word right there. He had the power to say, you ain't going to die. God said you're going to die. You ain't going to die. Right. He didn't have no fear of God. He didn't have no fear of the wrath of God. Or the power of God. He said, you ain't going to die. Now check what happens. For God, does, he's now talking on, speaking on behalf of God. For God does know or the hell of him. For God does know of the gods. Remember, this is a plural. For God does know in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods. And they try to stick a small G when you look at the King James Version of the Bible. The same word Elohim is there again, because it's a plural. No change. And ain't no big and small G's like I said in Hebrew. The letter is Gimai. And the letter that leads the word Elohim is Aleph. So it ain't no doggone capital G, no big Aleph, and no small Aleph. There's only one. And it says what there? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good from evil. Didn't we just cover that a little while back? Mm -hmm. The devil first introduced that thought. Now the man shall become like one of us, knowing good from evil. He's now saying that God does know that they eat of your eyes, and you shall know good from. Evil. Same point. What is wrong with knowing good from evil? Nothing. If if you already got evil in you, but if you're all good because you're in God's grace, then knowing good from evil becomes a problem. But they told you they didn't know good from evil in verse 25. Of chapter 2 because it said they were naked and didn't even know shame and they're going to introduce you right in this Bible that shame is one of those degrees of evil I'm going to get right to it because you don't want a lot of time here today all right verse 5 for God the Elohim does know that in the day you eat thereof your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods knowing good from evil or tob and ra agreeable and disagreeable 6 and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a and that was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat so she took of this food after she was tempted by something tempted by the fact that the first line it says good for food consumption next was what and that it was pleasant to the eye it was beautiful and third desire to make one wise food beauty and wisdom you hear that three things that he used to lure her now let's stop me having to survive to support my family to make money to feed my family leads many men into evil and many women into evil drug dealers and their likes Number runners and everything else because they can't afford to feed their family. They stop trying to earn it by the sweat of their brow from, and they live the land of the south and go up north. They, st they stop becoming farmers and plowers. They want to go up and become businessmen and singers and models and end up in all kind of evil. That's one of them. Food. What's the next one? Beauty. Many of people are led by beauty. I want to be a model. I want to be a star. I want to be a singer. I want to be a movie star. I'm beautiful. Look at me. That's when women start doing all kinds of stuff to their hair and tightening up their clothes and splitting splits in their views, coming to church over glamorous, trying to be seen by men. Right in God's house. And men are doing the same thing. And finally, wisdom. I want to know everything. That's taking people into all this voodoo crap. All these palm readers and all these demons on television telling you that they can read your future. They can read your future, then you don't have to call them and give them your telephone number. They should call you. 
And if you do call them, the first thing you ask them is, what's my name? What's my nickname? And if they're your reader and they're so into your whole soul, then they already know that if you got to dial or some number here, call her. Why do they have to put a telephone number for a psychic reader on television? A hotline. You don't need no hotline. The reason why they call it a hotline is a direct line to hell. You don't need a hotline psychic. If you psychic, you win. You call me and tell me and you tell me everything about me and you won't get paid for it. Those are demons, but that's their desire. You want to know the secrets of tomorrow when you ain't getting past today. That was the devil's tricks. Read on with it say. It said, and she gave some to her husband. Now verse 7. And there, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. What was the first thing they found out? What does it say in Genesis chapter 2? Verse 25, the last verse, it says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. But the first thing they did when they violated the first law, the real first commandment, because there ain't no ten commandments in the Bible, it's 613. If you don't believe me, ask any Hebrew who really knows. The first thing they found out, they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. They covered themselves. They learned something. What? Shame. The body became something to hide. What did eating an apple, figuratively speaking, have to do with me recognizing your nakedness? That tells you that eating the apple was not is symbolic of an, another, ret, another ritual, a sexual ritual. That de devil introduced them to lust, to beauty, to greed. He introduced them to a lot of things in that one statement. And those things are ruling the world and making everybody evil. That's true. Let's go on so you see it. And they heard the voice of the Lord God, not Elohim by himself, but the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Adam and Eve tried to hide from God in a garden that God created because these were mortal men gods walking cool of the day. They could feel the temperature. They knew cool from warm, from hot, from cold. And they walked. That means they had a pace. And they were in the garden. And God is not inside anything. God is all outside all things and all things are inside God. So God can't be in a garden. God can't walk through a garden. And you cannot hide from God. Only God can hide you from him. The only place back then where God hid people was in the city of Nod. Where he made Cain hide away from his face. Amongst those evil Nakashites, Which is where that serpent came from. The city of Nod. Where Cain found a wife and started an evil nation. That is mixed amongst us as human beings. Breeding with us on a daily basis. And we don't know who they are. They're our best friends, our wives, our ministers, our lawyers, the cops, the sheriffs, the policemen, the firemen. They're all over the place. But there's good amongst us. When you meet a, when you meet a sheriff and you say, I meet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I meet you in the name of God the Father, then, you meet, then you're talking to one of God's children. The other ones don't say that. You know what I'm saying? They're walking around all day as a police officer, but you don't never see them in church. They're out on the road arresting and pulling out guns, but you don't never see them doing that. Okay. Um, I, I'm at um, number eight. I got to go over that again. And it says, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in, in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Nine. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, unto Adam, where art thou? God don't have to ask anybody where they are. God knows where everybody is at at all times. These are men gods. These were angels incarnate. Like it says in Daniel, Gabriel came down as a man. And the word Gabriel means man of God. Gebrael, man of God, a mortal God. What did you say, Daniel's what? 921. Look it up. Walking on earth as men. And he said, I heard, here's Adam talking. I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself you hear me now we're back to that same thing with Genesis 2 the last verse shame I am now he's telling listen Adam is hiding from God because he's naked but he's already made an apron so what is he doing he's lying man has lied 
Because he already made an apron. So he's not naked. But he's telling God, I'll hit myself because I'm naked. He's lying to God. Plus he's trying to hide from God. So he got deception right there. He got lying there. You know what I'm saying? All that taking place in one place. And he said, who told thee thou art naked? Who, how do you know that you were naked? Hast thou been taken of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? First commandment. Not Exodus, Genesis. You were commanded not to do this. What did he say? Right? And the man said, meaning Adam, the woman whom thou gave to me to be my wife, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Adam blamed God. He said, woman, you gave me. You know what I mean? She made me do it. What is man learning now? Not just shame, but he's also learning blame. These are the attributes of evil being born right here in the Bible. Right? And then it says, And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The serpent tricked me, and I did eat. That's not true. The serpent made her an offer. He didn't trick her. Everything he said she would get, she got. Her eyes were open. She knows good from evil. The fruit was pleasant to the eyes, good for food, and desired to make one wise. You got it all. And now you know good from evil. Because it says later on in this same chapter, chapter 3 of Genesis, the man who now he knows good from evil. So what the devil promised you, you did get. He didn't trick you. She lying again. You just did not obey God's commandment. And now you're looking for someone else to blame the fault on. You're passing the buck from one to another. You're now ashamed that you're nude. You now know what lust is. You're now being deceitful. You're now hiding from God. You're now lying. These are all the things that man does. This is all he got. He learned all that just in Genesis chapter 3. Just that quick. Now let me look at verse uh, 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above the cattle and above every what? Beast of the field. Back to that again. Upon thy belly shalt thou go. I thought this was a snake. Wouldn't the snake already be on his belly? Was it a snake with legs? See, this was not a snake. This was figured this was somebody going to lose their legs. Watch. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. They'll be out in the deserts. You know what I'm saying? They won't have fertile soil. That's why I'm telling you, Muhammad, you got to watch them. And watch what number 15 says, which is very important. I'm going to take it off here. And I will put enmity between thee, talking to the snake, the serpent, the serpent man, and the woman, talking about Eve, and between thy seed, talking about the serpent having a seed, children, offspring, blood, zira in Hebrew, and her seed, talking about Eve's children and Adam's children. He's going to put enmity between them, hate, evil between them. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. They tell you right there in the Bible, Nesala. It's going to be right there, enmity, hate between two seeds. Again, I ask you, does the devil have children? Yes or no? Does the devil come in human form? Yes or no? Is he a race of people too? A group of people too? Is he walking amongst us, eating with us, sharing with us, and stealing and corrupting us at the same time? Is that not what it's saying right here? Does angels come in human form? Are there two groups of angels, cherubim and seraphim? Are they at war? Are the seraphims the good ones and the cherubims the bad? And are the cherubims kind and swore as a family to keep us from eternal life? We are living in the midst of a day and time where evil is doing its thing. But you know what happens? They can't see it because they don't know how to start with the beginning. They read the Bible and they're always, always down in the New Testament. Jumping all over the place, confusing people instead of starting with Genesis and start with the Hebrew and find out what it really says. Like we picked up this on the last tape, we started with the beginning and how that doesn't mean that. When we go to part three of this same tape, we're going to pick up about Genesis and the beginning and the creation to get the real meaning of it. Because you have to want to know when was the devil created? Who created the devil and why do we need him? 
Couldn't God just wave his hand and all this go away and it be no more evil? No, because God needs to test us. God don't need to test us. God already knows what's in our heart. A Yahweh needs to test you. A Yahweh can't see what's in your heart, but he know him can. You know what I'm saying? We need to know those things. We need to find those things out. So we pick this up again next week. Amen.